Hi, this is Josh with Retro TV One Tech, and today we're going to be unboxing and playing one of the most iconic video games of all time, The Oregon Trail. Before we check out the game and show you what's in the box, let's take a quick look back at the history of this iconic piece of software. I do plan to do a full historical documentary on this game in the future, but for now, a brief overview will do. The original version of the game was created in 1971 by Don Rawich, Paul Dillenberger, and Bill Heineman. It was originally written to be played, not on a standard personal computer as you might expect, but on an old teletype machine connected to a remote mainframe computer. These systems used a paper tape system similar to a printing calculator or a cash register receipt printer to display the game instead of a monitor. The game was originally written for Rawich to use with his junior high history students while he was working as a student teacher. Even though the teletype interface was awkward, the game was immediately popular with the students. A few years later, the game was acquired by the MECC, or the Minnesota Educational Computer Consortium, and it was ported to a CDC Cyber 70 system for students around Minnesota to use on their statewide network. The game was eventually ported to the Apple II, the Atari 8-bit computers, the Commodore 64, and the TRS-80 before finally being ported to MS-DOS for PC-compatible computers in 1990. This is the version that we have today. The game went on to be ported to many other systems including iOS in 2021 to be enjoyed on iPhones and iPads around the world. It seems fitting that we're going to enjoy this game on my Tandy 1000 TL2 computer since the game was ported to the TRS-80 a few years earlier. And of course, TRS stands for Tandy Radio Shack. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that brief history of this iconic game. Now, let's check out what's in the box. Alright, let's check this out. Super excited to have gotten a box copy of this game. Found it on eBay and was really just uh, enthusiastic about checking out what the original box might have looked like this, for this game. I never actually owned this game, I only played it at school and so I didn't really know exactly what the box looked like and uh, it's really cool to have this now to check out. So you can see down here it talks about the uh, system requirements IBM PC XT AT PS1 PS2 of course Tandy which is what we're going to be playing it on 512K uh, CGA EGA uh, MCGA VGA all those kind of things DOS 2.1 and also includes both size discs and we're going to actually try the five and a quarter inch disc because I haven't even tried that drive on my Tandy yet so I'm excited to see if that works. Uh, but anyway the box art is really really cool you can see there the uh, Conestoga wagon, the river and the mountains in the background super super iconic and just beautiful and really evokes images of the old west in your mind as you, uh, as you check it out. Let's look at the back of the box here and you can see kind of the advertisement travel the trail. So there you go and you can see 2,000 miles of untamed wilderness, talk to colorful characters, and uh, find or ford rather raging rivers, all on the way to your new home in Oregon. This is pretty cool. The biggest thing about this game that made people really love it is hundreds of variations that kept the game new, exciting, and challenging, so a lot of variables that change the gameplay every single time you play the game. Alright, let's see what's in the box. Here we go. And I've been told that this is a complete copy, of course. It wasn't sealed, it has been played and opened before, but how much? Uh, well, we shall see. Let's see what's in here. Right, so here we go, let's see if we got it all. It's like opening presents, right? Oh, looks like the software may be right here in this section. And let's see if there's anything else in there. Looks like we are all good there. Important. Please read before opening. Ooh, copyrighted material. All right, well that's cool. So we'll check out the discs here in just a second, but let's see what other inserts were included here. This is pretty cool. Club Kidsoft. Okay. So it's like an advertisement for a, like a kids software club, and there you go. It'd be funny to send that off. I'm sure, uh, I don't know if MECC still exists or not, or if that address still exists uh, you know, all these years later. I guess it would be uh, like 32 years later if they made this in 1990. So doubtful that any of that uh, 
still exists. And then we have a little uh, catalog here. It looks like Great Plays by MECC. That's pretty cool. Something about Prism Direct. We've got uh, Excitement, Adventure, Challenges, and Rewards. Wow, fun times. <laughs> All right. So, just got some different uh, games listed in here. Dino Park Ty Tycoon Amazon Trail. I guess that's probably a spinoff of Oregon Trail, so that's pretty cool. Chess Master 4000. Ooh, Mario's Missing. That's interesting that the MECC had licensed Mario uh, from Nintendo. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to go through this whole catalog, but it's really, really neat to see. Oh, this is like a a subscription service on disc monthly I think I remember reading about this but it's just really neat to see all these old software titles in this catalog look at that there it is Wolfenstein 3d oh my goodness <laughs> that's pretty cool so I guess these aren't obviously all MECC games then so I was wrong when I out talked about Mario being licensed by MECC this this is just uh, games that they are selling and probably have been paid to put in this uh, catalog here I would assume because it does say presented by MECC I said I wasn't gonna go through this whole thing but I am because I'm curious to see what else is in here Street Fighter 2 Wow that's interesting so this must have been right around 1990 maybe a couple years later I'm not sure I can't remember when Street Fighter 2 came out I'll have to look that up all right I couldn't stand it I looked it up and uh, Street Fighter 2 was released in 1991, so this game had to be at least, uh, or this version of the game had to be at least manufactured in 1991 or later. Because I'm sure they published it for several years, even though it was released in 1990. So, anyway, let's see what else is here. And here we have the game manual. That's interesting. It almost looks photocopied there. It's definitely black and white. No. Oh. That looks printed. That would be interesting if they had photocopied manuals here, but it's definitely black and white. And I am definitely not going to go through all of this, but uh, it is really interesting to see the manual and everything. Step one, step two, all those things about installation. And uh, then a little bit about traveling the Oregon Trail. What was it like to bid farewell to friends and neighbors and set off on a 2,000 mile trek? in a covered wagon. Ooh, sounds intriguing. <laughs> and then here you can see even like a little screenshot in black and white of the game. Remember the original game I said earlier was just text. And of course this game, they did add graphics for one of the Apple II versions and that version was basically ported over with some modifications to the PC. Oh, there you go. There's a map of the Oregon Trail. So that's pretty cool. Starting in Independence and going all the way through several states and ending up in Oregon City, Oregon. So there you go. Very interesting stuff. Ah, here we go. So now we get an answer for when this particular version of the game was published. Again, this version came out in 1990, but this print run was 1993-1994. You can see some software titles in there. Dino Park Tycoon again. Uh, Odell Down Under, lots of fun stuff there. So this is the uh, MECC specific software. And again, we've got Amazon Trail and Oregon Trail, and this is the uh, CD-ROM edition. So you can see the graphics are much, much more um, detailed there. And you can also see uh, that it was about $70, $69.95. And then you can also see basically this version. My Own Story, Storybook Weaver, lots of fun stuff. I think I kind of remember Storybook Weaver, actually. All right, let's check out the discs here. I wonder how many discs, if it's just one of each or a couple of each. We will see here in just a second. It looks like, okay, that's kind of what I was thinking. So there is one three and a half inch disc, 720K, because you can see there's not a, another notch on this side. If it was high density, it would need to be uh, notched again over here. But there it is right there, IBM Tandy version 2.1. And it also said it required DOS 2.1 or higher. It's an attractive blue floppy disk here. And let's check out 
the five and a quarter discs here. So we've got disc one and disc two. So the program must be more than 360K, obviously, because that's all that would fit on a five and a quarter inch disc. It's been so long since I've held one of these. Oh, probably, I don't even know how many years. Maybe I don't want to know, but either way, these are the um, double-sided discs, but they are uh, standard density, not the high density uh, that came later. So, but anyway, it was double-sided, and uh, so the disc drive would read both sides there, but you do have to be really careful in these not to touch this part because it can actually uh, interfere with the disc being read by the drive. All right, so it's pretty cool to see both of those, and you know, but they're both about the same, but uh, it's been a while since I've seen one of these floppy disk sleeves as well because, you know, they had to protect that part of the disk uh, from dust and fingerprints. And, of course, on these um, three and a half inch disks, they had this metal cover already built in so they didn't need the floppy disk sleeves on these uh, three and a half inch disks. Anyway, let's check the game out on my Tandy 1000 TL2. Never get tired of seeing how fast this thing boots up. Here we go. And the disc in a five and a quarter inch drive. It's been a long time since I've done that. And then you gotta, of course, close the drive locking mechanism. And this drive is drive B. So let's see if it works. All right, it's thinking about it. It looks like it's gone to the B drive with no error, so let's see what happens. Let's get a directory of this disk. Ah, it works! Wow! First of all, that's the first time I really was able to discover that this Tandy 1000's disk drive actually works. The five and a quarter inch drive actually works. It's pretty awesome. So there you see all the contents of the disk. Of course, Oregon.exe, probably how we play the game, install, readme, all kinds of fun things. All right, I think I'm just going to type Oregon here and get started. I hear the disk drive doing its thing there. There we go. Wow. That's really cool. And here is our main menu. You may travel the trail, learn about the trail, see the Oregon top 10, turn sound off, or choose management options. All right, well, let's just go right for it. Let's just travel the trail. Many kinds of people made the trip to Oregon. You may be a banker from Boston, a carpenter from Ohio, a farmer from Illinois, or find out the differences. Hmm, that is a great question. And I actually haven't played this game for a long time, but my grandfather, was a farmer from Illinois, so we're going to do that. What is the first name of the wagon leader? Gosh, of course. Nope. Capitalized there. One of the first names of the four other members in your party. So let's go with Steph. Let's go with Liam. Uh, let's see. Let's go with Jenna. And then we'll just, uh, we'll take an extra person. Maybe, uh, I guess Dale can come with us. There we go. Yes. All right, it's 1848. Your jumping off place for the Oregon is Independence, Missouri. You must decide which month to leave Independence. I wonder, ask for advice. So we have to get there before winter. So what does it say? You attend a public meeting held for folks with the California Oregon fever. You're told if you leave too early, there won't be any grass for your oxen to eat. If you leave too late, you may not get to Oregon before winter comes. If you leave at just the right time, there will be green grass and the weather will still be cool. Okay, let's see uh, what we want to do here. So I would say probably March is too early. Uh, April is uh, maybe a little too early. Let's go with May because, you know, that's when I was born. It's my birth month. All right, so we have equipment supplies. We have 400 in cash, but you don't have to spend it all now. Well, that's good. You can buy whatever you want at Matt's General Store. Yeah, let's go talk to Matt and see what we can buy here. Hi, Matt. We need uh, oxen, of course, clothing, 
for both summer and winter. Plenty of food for the trip, ammunition, spare parts for the wagon, all kinds of cool stuff. By the way, I was just noticing this game definitely is in CGA. It doesn't have a special Tandy graphics mode. Uh, but of course, if we had VGA and I can try it, on, try it on my other laptop, we would get that 256 colors eventually. All right, so what item would you like to buy? We definitely want to buy uh, oxen. So let's see what we can do there. There are two oxen and a yoke. I recommend at least three yokes. I charge $40 a yoke. All right, well, let's go with three then. If he recommends at least three, oops, I said four. We'll go with three. There we go. All right. Let's go with food, because we have $400 to spend. I recommend that you take at least 200 pounds of food for each person in your family. I see that you'll have five people in all. You'll need flour, sugar, bacon, and coffee. My price is 20 cents a pound. How many pounds of food? See, this is all about math as well. Wow, 200 pounds per person, and there's five people in all. So we would need 1,000 pounds, I guess. So there we go. Let's see what we got there. All right, so $320. See, that doesn't leave a lot of money there. All right, clothing. Let's see what we need to do here. I recommend taking at least two sets of clothes per person. Each set is $10. Um, really don't have enough for clothes for everybody because that would be a hundred dollars and we don't have that much money so that's pretty interesting how that all works out um let's just go i guess with uh five sets of clothes total and we'll just go with that okay 370 what about ammunition see we don't have enough money for all this let's go back to food because i think um with food oh i don't think we can delete anything off of the bill at this point Okay, so let's go with zero. Ah, okay, that zeroes it out. That's cool. All right, so what I would look at here on this is maybe we can hunt food as we go along. And so let's cut that back to um, 100 pounds per person at 500 pounds of food. Hopefully we don't starve now. And clothing, I feel like that's a little bit more important because definitely, you know, you're going to need... Um, clothing to stay warm so you don't get sick and all that kind of thing so we're going to actually end up with 10 sets of clothes that's two per person there we go now we have 320 dollars spent and let's see we need boxes of 20 bullets so how many boxes do we want and if we get 10 boxes that's 200 bullets uh, what about 20 boxes i think that would be good because we definitely need enough boxes to and we have 400 what about spare parts yeah we don't need spare parts. Oh, wow. Well, I guess we do have some money for some of that. How many wagon wheels? Um, let's go with one. How many axles? One. How many tongues? One. Sure, $390. What if we get one more wheel? Okay, just kind of figuring this out as I go along. It's fun to do this. So I want two. Did I get that right? Uh, let's see. Got to do this again. Okay, so spare parts. We're going with two wheels, one axle, one tongue, and that should put us right at 400. And we're going to leave this door. Press space bar. Well, then you're ready to start. Good luck. You have a long and difficult journey ahead. Yeah, we're going to need it. At some point, it's probably going to ask for disc two here, but maybe that's not until later in the game. We probably won't get that far. We'll see what happens. Love that floppy disk sound there. Taking a while to load. Ah, here we go. Well, that's a lot of fun. A little Yankee Doodle there. PC speaker sound. That Tandy PC speaker is so awesome you can really hear it. So here we go. The weather is cool, health is good, pace is steady, and rations are filling. That's good. All right, so everything's good so far. You may continue on the trail, check supplies, look at map. Let's look at the map first. I feel like that's the first thing you should do on the trail. Let's look at the map and see where we are. It'd probably be faster if we had put this on the hard drive, but I really wanted to use that floppy disk drive here. So 
it's kind of hard to set the brightness on the camera perfectly for this but it looks like we are of course in independence and we're headed for uh, fort kearney chimney rock laramie all kinds of fun things so let's see what we can do let's continue on the trail i mean it looks like we are ready to go everything's good so should we talk to people let's see if we can talk to people that'd be fun see what people have to say. A trader named Jim tells you, better take extra sets of clothing. Trade them to Indians for fresh vegetables, fish, or meat. It's well worth hiring an Indian guide at river crossings. Expect to pay them. They're sharp traders, not easily cheated. Well, there you go. All right, so that's good good advice to have some things to trade. Let me continue on the trail. Let's see if we can do it. From Independence, it is 102 miles to the Kansas River Crossing. This May 1st, 1848. Weather cool, health good, food 500 pounds. Next landmark, 102 miles. All right, let's do it. 102 miles, how many days is that going to take? Press enter to size up the situation. I mean, find wild fruit. Okay. We're going to continue on the trail. It looks like we're still good. There it goes. Steph has typhoid. Oh my goodness, well, that's not good. <laughs> That's like already on day two. So what do we do there? Just enter. Uh, no, we want to continue on the trail. Um, so there we go. Health is good for May 3rd. Next landmark. All right. So we still have 490 pounds of food. So everything's good there. Let's press space bar to continue. May 4th is my birthday. Health is still good. Jenna has cholera. <laughs> That's interesting. So I wonder what we're supposed to do for that. It still says health good, but Jenna has cholera. I think we're good. Let's keep going. See what happens. Sorry, Jenna. <laughs> Wrong trail. Lose two days. Oh my goodness. We're in trouble now. <laughs> we still have enough food. Come on, man. Figure out the, uh, the trail here. Okay. Health is fair. We might want to stop to rest then a little bit. Ooh, and there's rain. Lose one day. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're definitely... Uh, we definitely need to uh, stop to rest. So let's see if we can do that. The amount of the food the people in your party eat each day can change. Filling, meals that are large and generous, meager, bare bones. What is your choice? Um, I would say... Let's do uh, filling for now to keep us really, really healthy. Alright. Here we go. So we rested... All right, so let's see if we can continue on the trail. All right, health is still fair. You're now at the Kansas River Crossing. Would you like to look around? Sure, yes. Not sure exactly what that song is. It's not ringing a bell right now. Somebody in the comments, let me know. I should know it. I just don't off the top of my head. It's pretty cool. All right, so we get a little look at that. Let's look at the map and see where we are. All right, so it looks like we are just at the river there. You can kind of see it. Like right there, okay. Our health is fair, so I wish I do kind of wish that I could um, figure that out a little bit. I think we should probably change the food rations to uh, meager. I feel like. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna stop to rest for a little bit because health is fair. I don't feel like that's not a good thing. So let's rest for one day. What if we rest for one more day? Let's see if that helps our health. Maybe it, maybe it just won't get better. Maybe we're just... Nope, our health is not going up. So let's move on. You must cross the river in order to continue. The river at this point is 630 feet across and 5.1 feet deep in the middle. Okay. You may attempt to ford the river, caulk the wagon and float it across, take a ferry across, wait to see if conditions improve, get more information well 5.1 feet that's pretty deep we couldn't ford the river because uh you know 
it, me at 5'8", now I'm going to be only 7 inches out of the water, so that would be pretty risky. Taking a ferry probably would be money that we don't have, so let's caulk the wagon. See what happens. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Did it make it? How much? How many? You had no trouble floating the wagon across. Yay! And all this is random, of course. All right. So we go from the Kansas River to the uh, Big Blue River crossing. 82 miles. So we've traveled 103 miles. So let's just keep going. May 14th. Everything looks good. Food is still holding out pretty well. It's very rainy. You are now at the Big Blue River Crossing. Would you like to look around? Well, of course. Let's see what song they play here. Whether I actually know it or not. I should know that again probably just too late and my brain is not working but I think that's in the beginning band book anyway that I teach out of fun all right so let's see let's check supplies let's see what the supplies are looking like I imagine all the breakdowns and stuff come later all right so we have six oxen ten sets of closing four clothing 400 bullets wagon wheels everything pretty much we have other than money we have no money so that's fun all right well, I guess let's just keep going. See what happens. We must cross the river. It's 249 feet across and 4.9 feet deep in the middle. I feel like the caulking the wagon and floating it across is like a good thing. But, you know, we could, we could get unlucky this time. So let's see what happens. Imagine they won't let us do it twice in a row. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Oh, and there it goes. And we're done. Wagon tipped over while floating. You lose. One wagon wheel. Jenna drowned. Liam drowned. Oh, that's so sad. My goodness. Wow. Yikes. Poor Liam. He didn't make it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, that's tough there. All right, well, I guess we keep going. We press on. Poor Jenna. Poor Liam. Steph has exhaustion. Well, of course. Liam just passed away. She's, she's upset. I'm upset too, my goodness. Alright, well, I guess we just keep going. Just waiting on somebody to die of dysentery here. Food is going down. Looks like we're still doing alright. We're now at Fort Kearney. Let's look around at Fort Kearney and see what happens here. That's really cool. All right, so let's see. Change food rations, change pace, stop to rest, attempt to trade, talk to people. Oh, we can buy supplies. We don't have any money, though. That's the thing. So we could buy something, but we have nothing. So we're just going to leave the store. What about trading? I don't think we could trade. Let's see what it lets us do there. You meet another immigrant who wants 108 pounds of food. He will trade you one wagon tongue. I really don't. I need the food more than I need the wagon tongue. Okay. Well, then I guess we just keep going. We'll do this for a few more minutes and see where we end up. 250 miles to Chimney Rock. So, all right, here we go. We're traveling about eight miles a day. Is that right? Oh, uh, about 20 miles a day. That's actually a pretty good pace. I looked at the was looking at the wrong number there. We're getting close to a landmark here. 74 miles. Oh, broken wagon axle. Would you like to try to repair it? Of course we would. Like to repair it. You were unable to repair it. You must replace it with a spare part. Of course. Well, we do have that. Uh, okay. Well, there we go. That's just they're putting food in our rations. There. Steph has dysentery. Fun times. Alright. 
Not really much we can do about that. You're now at Chimney Rock. Would you like to look around? We're down to 200 pounds of food. We better uh, change the food rations here. People, you're just going to have to get by on less food. I don't know. We got 200 pounds of food left, and we're not even halfway there, so... So old Lang Syne, that's fun. It's not New Year's, but we'll take it. Okay. It's pretty cool. I don't see anything about hunting. That's the one thing. So I've got bullets I can hunt, but there's nothing to do there. Let's see about trading. Meet another immigrant who wants one wagon axle. You don't have this. Well, there you go. All right, so I guess we continue on the trail. We'll go for a few more minutes. See if we can get to Fort Laramie. There's Fort Laramie there. It's 68 miles away. We're almost there. Keep going. The weather is hot. Let's look around Fort Laramie and we'll stop for now. super fun. Well, that's all for now for this unboxing, brief history, and a quick playthrough of Oregon Trail. We hope you enjoyed the video. We'll do a more complete historical retrospective on the game in the future. It's been a lot of fun just looking through a brief history of it, so I can't wait to check out the full history of this fascinating game. And of course, it was fun to play through it after all these years. I didn't remember hardly anything, so it was like playing it again for the first time. So that was super fun. In fact, I think I may go play it here again after I finish this video and see how far I can get before I die of dysentery or lose my entire party or maybe even make it to the goal. Who knows? But anyway, it's been a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what your memories are of playing this game. I'd love to read those in the comments down below. And also, be sure to subscribe to Retro TV One Tech if you love these tech videos. I'm going to keep making them hopefully about once a week if I can. And uh, I hope I'll see you on the next video. All right, that's all for now. So for now, enjoy that tech and keep it retro.